Marvin, it was a very positive first half, but then things just seemed to go wrong. Yeah, um, positive maybe 44 minutes and, and things didn't go wrong. We caused our own our own downfall. Um, very similar to the goal we conceded against Falkirk and, and that one is in kind of the forefront of my mind where, you know, unfortunately Kyle made a foul that day, doesn't clear his head, ball gets crossed, his man scores. So we go through it and we speak about how important it is once you made the first mistake that you clear your head and then you you know you help yourself out of a, a small hole so to speak Effie has to deal with that ball has to deal with that ball you know when it bounces has to deal with that ball when he gets his first touch and put it out for a throw on instead I'm, I'm unsure you know what the most experienced player that I have does he somehow gives a corner away and then you know his marking of of the opposition player is is diabolical you know, it's, there's no great movement from him. For some reason, he goes far too tight at the start, not looking at the ball, just looking at the man. Something again, it just seems like when you speak about things in the week, they just rear their heads again. Um, you're an experienced defender, you know, it doesn't, as I said, doesn't move off him. And you, you know, what can you do? The ball gets then gets headed in the back of your net from a ball up the side of you, which you ship out for a throw that you don't, and then you don't, you don't mark the man properly. You know, it's. It's diabolical because, like you said, for 44 minutes or 43 minutes leading up to that, you're 1-0 up and, you know, you're absolutely fine in the game. And then again, we give a team that energy boost um, by conceding a sloppy, sloppy goal and you'll never see, you know, it seems to be happening far too often. You know, you go to the other end and, and they're being marked tightly and their players are heading the ball away. But, yeah, that, that first goal is, is diabolical. And then obviously we come in at half-time, we have a chat, we speak about it, speak about starting the second half well. Harry Stones has to pull off a save uh, to his left-hand side. Titter scores a goal against us at Kelty, you know, where we don't defend it well enough at the edge of the box. The same thing happens again today. You know, uh, Craig gets himself into a good position, should make some sort of contact on the ball or just stand up. Instead, we let him onto his left foot. And then Carl McClellan turns his back, hits off his back, goes into the corner of a goal. Now... I know I sound like a broken record and if players weren't being shown, Carl had a massive tendency, if you watch our games back at the start, to do that. And, you know, it's been kind of coached out of him and he's been shown why you shouldn't do it, you know, why you shouldn't open your legs and spread your body because ricochets like that happened. If it hits you square, then the ball goes away. If you are square and it hits you on the shoulder, it loops up more in the air. But as soon as you turn your back, it creates an impossible angle for the goalkeeper to save it. And then the third goal, Again, you know, they've got real quick fire goals. Kelty have scored a similar goal to that. Now, during training this week, we said we're going to a back four. So we've worked on if one of our defenders steps in, full back on that side, be nice and narrow so you can see the run coming. Because what they do is they come inside, play it to the striker's feet, then run off it and try and get the return. For some reason, Jordan Houston finds himself in a position that he shouldn't be in. And then he's nowhere near able to get a block on the shot. Now, brought a drone to record it. So we're not just speaking about these things. We're not just, you know, moving them around on the pitch, showing them on the tactics board. These things are recorded and then shown back to them. You know, this is what you should do. This is what's going to happen. This is what you should do. And yet we can see the third goal. And I know, and I understand that I'm the manager, it falls upon me. But if you interview any one of my players, they will tell you exactly what I've just told you there. He has shown us. He has shown us not to do it. And yet, you know, we can, as I said, we can see... Three goals today that, that are unavoidable. The first one, Sandra, at the time when it comes is, is, is embarrassing and upsetting. Especially when they were so far on top at that point. And then, is there a feeling that the confidence starts to go once that one's gone in, they start to panic a little bit, and then when the second one goes in, confidence goes? I don't think they even panic. They just, they just allowed themselves to concede another goal. You know, so many players in the box when the first one comes across and Harry Stones makes the save, and then you just make another irrational decision. Decision making is just just run in the way of the ball or just stand up and keep him on his right foot. Because no matter what happens, if I'm between man and ball, he he has to bend that ball around me, which was near on impossible the angle that Craig was coming at. But we get out of the way of it. And then one of my defenders turns sideways and hits him on the back and goes in the back of the net. And I thought Kyle did well today. I really, really did. I think he, he you know, he led the defensive line. He's trying to squeeze squeeze us up the pitch. And he's got a more experienced man to the side of him. You know, Kyle's done well, but... You, you can't do that. There's no need to turn your back. It's a football. You know, it's it's just air. It's level with air. Just let the ball hit you. You know, it's 
it hurts. It, it hurts to see that. And then the ball flies in the corner of the goal. And you're like, out of what? Out of what? You know, from 43 minutes in the first half, or 44 minutes in the first half to 10 minutes into the second half, it just, you know, fall apart. And it's just basic mistakes. And I'll bear the brunt of it. I'm the manager. I understand that. I understand how football works. But... I'm just, I'm just, I'm just lost for words. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. It must be demoralising as well when you put so much into it during the week. You think it's sinking in, and then as soon as you cross that white line, it seems to just disappear. Well, I, I said that to them, you know, before the game. Um, you know, when you cross that white line, I need to stand up and be counted. You know, and you're right. The amount of time that me and my coaching staff put into it, being a manager is a twenty-four hour job. You know, it really, really is. And and I love it, and I put all the work in it, and I try and like narrow it down to make things extremely simple for them. When I'm showing them videos, when I'm going through tactics, why we're going to do what we're we're doing, you know, how we're going to go about what we're doing, and like you said, you know, for forty four minutes, well done, one nil up, brilliant, and then that that what we do there, as I said before, I said it last week, I think it was, uh, it's almost like it becomes too easy doing the basics becomes too easy. I said the same thing last week, and what do you see again in the forty fourth minute? You try and dribble the ball and have under no sort of control, fall over the ball and then dribble it out for a throw. And then, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me as to why that happens or how, or how that happens. You know, I don't understand the decision making. And then you don't stay with your man and then he scores. And then all of a sudden it's 1-1 one, one at half time and you ask yourself, well, how's that happened? But it was very calm at half time. Spoke about, you know, going up a couple of levels, not conceding another sloppy goal, having a good... F- first 10 or 15 minutes to the second half and then we you know we all know what happened and it it is about keeping things simple there's only so much you can tell them and if you know if they're not taking it on board what can you do to to, to try and you know well, what more can you do you, you can try and swap the players you know but you don't you got five five boys into the against there you can try and swap them but it's the most basic of things just kick the ball off like no one at that point when that ball bounces there in that minute of the game Thought anything else other than the balls and get kicked off for a throw on. Fine, we defend from there. But we give a corner away and then we don't defend the corner. And then it's 1-1. One, one. So, like you said, I need to find a way of, of, of telling them more or showing them more or helping them understand and, and we'll be in tomorrow. Because, as I said, I can't accept, you know, mediocrity. I really, really can't. There, there's Just deal with the ball. Just deal with the ball and then deal with the corner coming in. It's it's that simple. And then it's half time. And that's and everyone says what a good first half it is. But instead you do that. Why? I need an answer as to why. Why why do you do that? Do I coach you to do that? No. Do you think that's a good decision to make to give a corner away from a punt up the side of you? Just put it out for a throw on. You're obviously angry mm-hmm. and you said you're embarrassed. Yeah. They're professional football players. Mm-hmm. They have to take a bit of responsibility as well. Yeah, yeah, of course they do. You know, as I said, I've I've been there and I've been a professional footballer and, and it's a very interesting word, professional, you know, because I've protected people for far too long, far too long when I'm seeing things happen, you know, at, at points this season, you know, flatness in games at times and I'm wondering what's going on. So much so I've gone and reviewed every session that we've done since I came into this football club. And then, you know, I understand that, you know, people go outside of here and... I need them to then be professional in what they're doing because sessions are set up as if they're going to go and rest and get the adequate rest in and hydration and eat at the right times and come in the next day. I've got far too many players pulling out through tightness. So it's meant that I've had to go outside and look into why is this happening. And, you know, when I spoke to players, I, I say, listen, if you want to coach that some players do at this level, do it Monday and Tuesday and, and possibly Wednesday, not till the last stages of the week. And then I go and find out that players are doing that. You know, players, uh, you know, on their computers for, for eight hours, you know, leading into matches. You know, I've had to go and pay and speak to someone to say, well, this is what's happening with my players. And it's only this week they came back with, you know, are, are they gaming? And I was like, well, we play games in training, thinking he meant that. And he's like, no, do, do they play on the Xboxes and Playstations? And I was like, I'll find out. And I go and speak to boys and boys are spending six, seven hours sat in one position, you know, eyes fixed, glued to a TV and then trying to go and play a match the next day and you're wondering why you can't concentrate come on like you know how privileged are we to do what we do and I explain this to them all the time there's part time teams in the league and there's full time teams 
and I'd much rather be a full-time team than a part-time team. But you have to take responsibility of what you're doing. And as I said, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed by the results today. I'm embarrassed by our start to the league. I'm hurting um, because, you know, as I said, you speak to any one of my players and then you ask them what I'm like on a day-to-day -day basis and what I give them. You know, they'll, they'll tell you. None of them could tell you that I don't give them everything. Some of them might say, doesn't pick me enough or whatever. But if you ask them, do you think he gives you everything? Every single one of them would say yes. And, and that's where we're at. But am I getting everything back from some? No. Too many shortcuts are being taken. Boys not wanting to go in ice baths yesterday. And I only find out after training. And, and then go out there and, and, and make a mistake. See if you're, even if you're top of the league and you're, and you're playing wonderfully well, you might have a bit more of an argument. There's a reason, there's a science behind these things. And then you go out there, you take shortcuts, and then you, you see it on the pitch. And it leaves you with little option to deal with these players like that when you have so many injuries. You talked there about another five out today. Yeah. Daniel Church was missing, Harry Cochran's not there. Um, Lewis, again. Yeah. yeah, just on the play, it's, it's a very small minority, but it's small percentages when you're in the position that we're in. Because, you know... That one that hits Carl on the back, for example, and another team, they'll probably go flying wide. So it's very, very small, but they're not doing as they should be doing. Sorry, leading back onto the injuries. Yeah, you've got Daniel Church out, you've got Carl Doherty out, you've got Harry Cochran out, you've got Jack Bryden out, you've got Lewis Gibson out. Uh, and I feel for Lewis, you know, I saw him this morning and he's, at, well, early afternoon, he's ever so upset, you know, obviously due to play to get today. I get a call from the physio this morning, and Lewis has slipped down the stairs and, and rolled his ankle and then he's got swelling in it. And that's the third time we've lost a player since training on the Friday. And I, and I really felt for Lewis because it, he was so upset. You know, he's, he's been patient, he's worked hard. You know, he's one that we've tried to get a lot of coaching in, uh, into. And, you know, as I said, he slips down the stairs Saturday morning and then he can't play in the game because he's got a swollen ankle and looks like he could be out for a couple of weeks. You know, it, it doesn't rain, it pours, does it? And, you know, and, and you feel like your luck has to change. But as I said, you know, serious injuries I get. You know, obviously Regan's done his ACL, Jack rolling his ankle, Lewis unfortunate with, you know, what's happened to him. But boys, you know, doing things incorrectly, sitting in bad positions in gaming chairs for seven hours and then get coming in with tightness. Being able to train one session, you're out with tightness again. You are not living your life right. And then that reflects on results, it reflects on the options we have on the bench, reflects on the options we have on the pitch, and ultimately it reflects on me because I'll be the one, you know, who, who bears the flack of that. Well, you are, you know. Of course. You could hear it in the crowd, some yeah. of the sections of the crowd. Online, people are yeah. calling for your head, and yeah. it is all falling on you. Yeah, no, of course, and, and that happens in football. And, like, the, the online thing, I think even when we were, you know, fantastic towards the end of last season, there were you know, people who wanted change in terms of that. But, as you said, the people who come and pay their money, I, I understand the frustrations, and like you said, it falls on me, me as a manager. Um, and, you know, and, that, and that's the thing, I get it, I get how football works. I understand, you know, kind of their frustrations, but if truth be told, I can't stop a lack in concentration that can seize the first goal. You know, I can only show. And if I show and then you don't listen, but I, can, I can't change because I have five boys out. So there's not really much you can do. You know, everyone's had an opportunity to play. Um, you know, I understand exactly, you know, the fans' frustration. I said that ultimately ends with me because managers can be changed, but you bring in a, a new manager, you know, things things aren't going to change unless people start changing things in their personal lives. And as I said, you know, boys are in tomorrow. Um, I won't have boys go, going out with this football club as professional footballers and doing things that part-time players do. If that's what they want to do, then knock the door and go and be part-time. I, I can't have it. You know, I explained to absolutely everyone the rules were clear. Clear at the start. Clear when I came into the club because the same thing was happening. You know, it's been clear since day one. It's been clear in the summer before boys have signed, before boys have signed new contracts, before boys have signed to come into the football club. And still people think they know better. And that's what hurts. You know, going out and coaching when you shouldn't be coaching. People say, oh, it's only coaching. They're standing up for two or three hours where we expect them to be off their feet. Instead, they're up, up in the cold. Then people are coming in and saying their muscles are tight. Who has to pay their wages? Us. You know, it's, it, it's, it, it's embarrassing. As I said, I'm fed up of... I'll protect you. See if you go out there and give me 100% and you make an honest mistake. Carl McClellan today's made a mistake. He's a young player, it happens. But you see, when you're not doing things right outside of this, and then I'm getting the flag based on you not doing your part correctly, 
then, then, I, then I can't protect you and I'll no longer protect you. I've tried to do it for weeks on end and now I'm finding out the truth that almost the club's being disrespected because they pay for us to be full-time and boys want to go and do things out with that, want to take shortcuts, you know, not wanting to do the gym properly unless they're being watched like hawks, you know, not wanting to go in ice baths trying to, you know, take shortcuts and then going out. Some, and as I said, a very small minority, but when you're in this position, you can't have any passengers.